Well, welcome back, everybody. I am here with Councillor Ken O'Flynn, and it's great to speak to you today, Ken. Thank you very much, Ben. Delighted to be uh, joining you. So I was fascinated last week when I saw you did a social media post in the wake of the obviously tragic killing of young Ashling Murphy, uh, where you were saying that we should be looking into legalizing tools like pepper spray for the purposes of self-defense so that if people are, God forbid, accosted by a criminal while they're out and about, they might be able to defend themselves. And I'm wondering if you would want to talk a little bit about that proposal and what, what inspired you to make this suggestion? Well, I, I suppose, Ben, look, I think everybody kind of rocked. The, the country is rocked at the moment. It's upset at the moment because of the death of Ashley Murphy. I only describe the same sentiments that hit the country um, on the death of Veronica Geary. The public outcry, the upset, the perturbment. And I think also we also associated with somebody that we knew that um, Ashley Murphy could be could be my daughter, could be my sister, could be my aunt, could be, you know, could be a family member, a girl that was only going out there for a run. And I think that resonates with society. Look, there's a lot of things that need to be discussed in the way. There's a lot of things that should have been discussed prior to this as well. And I'm not saying that I have all the answers when it comes to self-defense and pepper spray, but I do believe that that is not just a, it's not a knee-jerk reaction, but a caution for those that are going out. We all accept that education, um, the getting rid of uh, mask, mask, masculine toxicity uh, is very important. But I think it is also equally important that people have the use of pepper spray, have the use of self-defense, and self-defense classes, I believe should be free in our community. And I'll be honest with you then, my experience of people already, and having lived around Europe in different locations, um, you know, feel more comfortable, feel more assertive that they have something to defend themselves with. Uh, I, I, that's why I took into paper and I wrote to the Minister of Justice at the time, asking the Minister, would you please consider legalizing Right. I think there's quite a lot of countries in mainland Europe, Spain, Portugal, Italy, Austria, Czechoslovakia, or the Czech Republic, um, where it's, you know, about half of the European Union actually allows pepper spray. The other half then is either licensed or they have uh, reserved purely for the police services, similar to what we have in Ireland. I think the importance of, you know, self-defense for everybody, and it's not just women are victims on the streets. And we know that in, in recent times that there are far many more victims, um, people being attacked, people that are, are afraid to walk the street. I've been receiving numerous calls from constituents all throughout North, South, East and West, asking for increased lighting, CCTV, that are worried about their daughters, their sisters, their aunts, their, their you know, the, the people in their life that go for a run at three o'clock a day, that go for a run at four o'clock in the day. They, you know, they, people that are worried about their kids coming home late, late at night, walking dark roads. And, you know, You've interviewed me at my home, Ben, you know where I live. Um, you know, it, it really struck home for me recently when I was driving home and I saw one of my neighbours, I think she's maybe about 14, 15, going for a run, just thinking, my God, how dangerous it is now for to send your child out for a walk, for a run, for health. For, you know. And you can't, look, you can't lock them in, in, in cottonwood. Um, you can't keep them indoors all the time to protect them from the world. But I think by arming them with some sort of self-defense, some um, knowledge of self-defense, which I believe should be free to everybody, um, and allowing you the choice of being able to purchase pepper is, is worthwhile. And, you know, I can go back to the time when I lived in London myself, and I can remember how pepper saved one of my friends' lives. And, and that's where I'm coming from. And, and look, Ben, let, let's be realistic about it. Pepper spray is available. It can be bought online. It can be bought very, very easily. It can be brought into the country. That's the reality of it. Um, what would you say to somebody who said, well, by putting the onus on the potential victim that, the, oh, well, you should defend yourself with pepper spray, you should defend yourself with a taser or whatever it might be, that that's almost obfuscating that the real the real issue is law and order and we need to stop the criminals from attacking we don't have to be defending ourselves from criminals there are people who make this kind of argument a lot when you bring up these types they, of tools they do they do and, and they're entitled to their, their view the same as well as, as i'm entitled to my view but i have to say to you 
you know, by shouting and roaring and blaming politicians or blaming people that are coming up with ideas, um, you know, it's not going to stop, right? I would love to be able to, with the click of a finger or the press of a button, stop all crime in this country, throughout the world. I don't want to see anybody having to defend themselves. The sad reality of human nature is that there is always going to be crime. There is always, you know, the last 2,000 years of, 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 of society has told us that there has always been criminal activity. There has always been activity which is unacceptable to the mass of society. And in particular, when it comes to uh, personal um, attacks and sexual attacks and predatory, uh, that, that is something that we haven't addressed. And there are so many uh, doctors and, and professors that have written so many things about that trying to understand it. I don't think we do understand it yet. No, the, the reality for me is that people are entitled to their own decisions. I want people to be able to have the choice to defend themselves if they have to defend themselves. And I would love to see a society where we don't have to worry about that. Where people can go out and do whatever they like, whenever they like, without the risk of being attacked. That's what we all want. That's what all normal people want. But at the moment, that is not on the way. Let's call a space bed. What would you say to somebody who made the argument then that, well, sure, if people are allowed to purchase pepper spray and tools like this, then criminals will get it. And then, sure, the criminals will be that much more dangerous. What would you say to, to that argument? Well, first of all, they can still get it. We know from the IRA decommissioning a number of years ago that guns became a very um, almost normal in, in, crime, in crime in particular in Dublin. Um, we know that knives are available. We know that the, these things that can hurt somebody are available. The studies that we'll see in the United States, the studies that you see in Australia and in mainland Europe, show that pepper spray seems to be used not by the criminal, but mostly by the defendant. I'm not quite sure why that happens, but it's certainly certainly pepper spray isn't used um, to the to the by criminals on, on a general basis, and there's no documentary evidence to suggest that. Look, I accept what people are saying, but then, you know, do we get rid of all the knives in, in the country? You know, that's that's the reality of it. I, I think, look, I, I, there's a bigger conversation to be had. There's a conversation about education of men. There's a conversation about education of their classroom, where we all have respect for people's race, colour, creed, sexuality, orientation, whatever, whoever they are, whether they're black, purple, blue, pink, white, orange, it doesn't matter to me. But we have to have that education starting. We also need to look at our crime laws. And we need to look at what they did in uh, California in 1983, long before you were born, um, where they introduced Proposition 8. Proposition 8 was a very, very healthy thing that has worked and has decreased and de-escalated crime throughout California. And that's the three-strike option of if you've offended once, you'll go to jail. If you've offended twice, you'll go to jail. If you've offended for the third time, you will be incarcerated for a very, very long time, possibly life. And that is a huge deterrent to scare people straight. Of course, there has to be education. Of course, there ha we have to start teaching respect from the ages of four up. And, and mostly, mostly I find that we do have that in, in our schools today anyway. But there has to be, a f there has to be you know, when I went to school, it was um, Peter and Jane, and Peter, uh, Peter was watching football with Daddy, and Jane was doing the dishes with Mummy. You know, they don't no longer have books like that. But, you know, it's about that subtle type of education from day one and that respect for each other. Uh, uh, and that has to be good. But look, the, when it comes back to the introduction of pepper spray, what I'm saying is that that's not going to happen overnight. These are small things that we can do to improve people's life improve their quality of life, to also give them confidence again, because I know from my own friends and from WhatsApp groups that I'm on and et cetera, there are people worried about going out and there's people worried about leaving their children out, whether their children are over 18 or not. They're, you know, I have mothers coming to me saying, my daughter's 20 something, very similar to that girl who, who was murdered up the country. I'm worried about her going for a run in Glamire. I'm worried for, about her going for a run in Balancholic. That's what I'm hearing back from them. And that's the scare. Um, I remember hearing a story from several years ago which really perturbed me and it was from Denmark and in Denmark pepper spray is illegal like it is here and a young girl, I think she was 17, was 
attacked by a criminal who attempted to assault her. She managed to defend herself using the pepper spray that was in her purse and she fought off her attacker. The man fled, he wasn't caught, but when she went to the police over the issue, she was then charged potentially with carrying this illegal weapon and she was going to get in legal trouble. Now I actually don't know what happened with that case if it ended up going anywhere, but the fact that there was even a suggestion that a young girl who defended her own bodily integrity could potentially face legal penalties was astonishing and I don't know why that's not a bigger story that should surely every feminist in the western world should be screaming about that we should be talking about how this is a terrible violation of justice and yet I don't think I've uh, you know you have to go digging for that story it's not something that's ever talked about well, well look it's not me to speculate on, on what they do in Denmark but I know I don't know if you've ever been a victim of violent crime I have I um, owned a bar and restaurant and I was I was held up at one point um, I ended up losing part of my, my hearing because of it. I lost 25% hearing in, in my right ear. You know, most people would never be affected by serious violent crime in their life. Union. That's thankful, and I would never wish anyone to go through what I went through. Um, but only for self defense and only for actually, you know, from doing classes many, many years ago, something that stuck in my mind. As a child doing karate classes, was you know if you are attacked, if you have a set of keys on you, you know use your keys, which is what I did, which is how I got away. Um, so I, I don't think anyone who's a victim of a violent crime or potential violent crime should ever be accused of it. That's being straight. The reality here is that I know women in Cork, women in Dublin, women around the country that have already purchased. I've bought it on. Um, various Chinese websites and uh, Amazon and, and everywhere else where it's very, very available that are carrying, I don't think any woman that defends herself or any man that defends himself, by the way, or, or, or anything else should ever be prosecuted for doing Much appreciated. For well, that. Much appreciated. Well, thank you so much, Ken. Really yeah, appreciate your time. Delighted to be on.